In my last video, I used simple math to get pretty close to a supernova at the moment it collapses. I like the method I used because I didn't have to figure out what the acceleration of our ship was and I didn't have to pay attention to my position. I simply set a timer and reversed my trajectory at just the right time. But this time, we are going to micromanage the process a little more. If we can precisely calculate the ship's acceleration, then we can figure out exactly how long it will take to travel any given distance. So, I flew away from the sun to minimize its gravitational effect and then timed how long it takes to increase our speed by 1,000 meters per second. Turns out the ship's acceleration is close enough to 50 meters per second squared that I suspect it's coded to be exactly 50 meters per second squared. Now that we know the ship's acceleration, the basic equation we'll use is d equals 1 half a t squared. d is distance in meters and t is time in seconds. We plug in A equals 50 meters per second squared and solve for T to get T equals square root of D over 25. Let's test this out. We travel away from the sun to 69 kilometers. Nice. Convert to meters, plug in 69,000 for D, then we get T equals 52.5 seconds. Now, fun fact, the sun turns that weird solid orange color at exactly 22 minutes, but the moment when it collapses is at 22 minutes, nine seconds. So I want to start accelerating at 21 minutes and 16 and a half seconds. Well, that was pretty nice, but not what you came here for, was it? Let's take it to the extreme by flying away super far and then blasting past the supernova as fast as possible. And to do that, we can supercharge our ship by igniting two thrusters at the same time. Theoretically, this should increase acceleration by a factor of square root of two. And this is indeed what I found experimentally. Hopefully this is exact. We are traveling over 8,000 kilometers, so an error of just 1% would be more than 80 kilometers. And I don't want to be 80 kilometers away from the supernova, I want to be right there in it. So now we can fly away from the sun with 70.71 meters per second squared acceleration so that we get further out before needing to turn around. This will allow us to go faster than ever before. We just need to have a good idea about where and when to stop far away from the sun. Once we get there and match velocity, we'll start thrusting at the exact right time, but I don't want to get there too early or too late. So after some calculations in Excel and some failed practice runs, I nail down a plan. I'll fly away for 4,293 kilometers before reversing thrusters and coming to a stop at 8585 kilometers, 8585 kilometers. Then I will start flying back when exactly 12 minutes and 23 seconds total have elapsed. That leaves nine and a half minutes of accelerating at 50 meters per second squared. I could use the diagonal trick here to go faster, but I'd rather be able to look at the sun and adjust the ship's trajectory as we go. Unless I made a mistake somewhere, this should be quite precise. We are definitely going to get super duper close. There's no way I messed up the math somewhere, right? No doubt. Mm. 
Well, I'm not going to get better than that, am I? I can do it a few more times though, just to get those sweet shots. And then, just like last time, it's time for one final voyage. And there you have it. Thanks for joining me and... <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow, that gave me a heart attack. Or I, I, I'm speechless, you guys. I'm absolutely speechless. I can't even. <laughs> what a way to end this grand experiment of supernova flybys. Fantastic. Thanks so much for the comments last time. They really encouraged me to give this another shot and I'm really glad I did. If you thought this was cool, don't forget to leave a like and check out some of my other Outer Wilds videos. Thanks again, guys. Y'all take care.